So Julio Andres Iglesias Martinez is a PhD student at uh, Femto ST Institute in Besançon. His uh, research focuses on dynamical studies of mechanical metamaterials under the direction, under the supervision of uh, Vincent Lode and Maumer Kadic. Uh, Julio received a bachelor's degree in physics at the Universidad Autónoma Metropolitana de, in Mexico. Uh, a master's degree in optomechatronics at the Center for Research in Optics in Mexico as well, and a master in control for green mechatronics by the Université de Franche-Comté in Besançon. And we are very happy to receive him today as our junior speaker to give us a short course on block waves and introducing today's paper through his talk, which is entitled Time and Space Modulated Metamaterials. So Julio, the floor is yours. Hi. Uh... Thanks, Alex, for such a nice presentation. So let's get into it and for the invitation as well. Uh, so as you said, the paper that we're interested in reviewing today is the 2019 uh, paper uh, from Priorel by Emmanuel Galifi, Paloma Widrobro, and Sir John Pendry, entitled Broadband Non-Reciprocal Amplification in Luminal Metamaterials, where the concept of luminal metamaterials it was first introduced. Thanks to this uh, new uh, metamaterial, a new mechanism for ampli amplification have been uh, discovered. First, a little bit of context. When, the model when we modulate the material properties in periodic uh, manner in space, it opens the possibility to have properties that extend those of a normal material, such as band gaps. These band gaps are frequency range where no propagation modes are allowed. A great example of this are the Bragg gratings where we uh, um, modulate periodically the index of refraction. And with this, we have uh, these gaps. Thanks to these gaps, this uh, Bragg grating can be used as a fre uh, frequency filters, just as an example. If we extend this model to 2D, 3D, and even more generally, uh, we then call it photonic crystals. And in their counterpart in acoustics and elastics, they are called phononic crystals. This is in space. But what happens when we, we can also modulate uh, our material properties periodically in time? Uh, then we can modulate both at the same time. And we have what we call a space time modulation. This concept, although we are discussing a 2019 paper, is not new. The oldest example is from 1958 for a traveling wave parametric amplifier that is a transmission line similar to this one when you modulate one of the parameters, for example, the capacitance, to amplify the a signal. The main characteristic of this type of amplifiers are to have really low noise, uh, very low noise, but nowadays they are considered obsolete. But in recent years, a new uh, interest from the community have emerged, for example, this case of 2015, since these kind of amplifiers can reach the quantum noise level. In this case, we, they uh, actually uh, modulate the inductance of this metamaterial by using jobs and junctions. It is, it is important to underline that if well, we are focusing right now in uh, electromagnetic wave, all the properties, properties that we are going to discuss today, we, we can be ex uh, easily extrapolate to other type of waves, such as water, acoust acoustic, or elastics. Our 1D case can be similar to a greeting that is moving in space and time, such as this one. We are going to then modulate the the electric permittivity in this manner, and we define this speed of the of, of our greeting moving such as big omega, which is the frequency of the modulation, with g, which is the wave vector of the modulation. Also, for all this kind of modulation, we are not modulating, we are not moving any kind of matter, with this meaning that this is a type of, a type of uh, phase velocity and is not limited to the uh, speed of the wave in the, uh, in the media. So this CP can be any number from zero to infinity. 
since we have a periodic, uh, a periodic um, uh, coefficients, and we want to solve at the end of the day, as always, uh, a, a, equation, a differential equation, we, uh, uh, we have to introduce a very important theorem called the, block, the Floque block theorem that was first introduced in 1883 by Floque and then rediscovered by Bloch in 1923. This theorem tells us that for a uh, differential equation with periodic coefficients, we have at least one solution of this form, which is an expo a complex exponential with the uh, exponent of, the, of k, which we call it block wave number, and omega that we call block frequency or Floque frequency times or the uh, periodic function that have the same periodicity as our coefficients, in this case, our grating. Then we can use this solution, put it inside of an, an equation, in this case is, in this case is a source-free Maxwell equation, and we get a uh, Agent value problem that when we solve, we get what I would call the dispersion relation, that is the, the function of omega in function of k. This dispersion relation will help us to see all the block uh, of most of uh, a lot of the solution of the block waves of a periodic structure. Let's start with the simplest case or more, more uh, known case, that is the space uh, only modulated in space, such as the Bragg grating. Then we can say that this is a steady case, case where the modulation velocity is equal to zero. And we have the, uh, a lot of properties that's interesting. For, uh, for starting, this dispersion relationship is G periodic in K. These black lines, we'll call it that are block modes, and it's where propagation modes of a wave are allowed to propagate through the, or in this case, our slab. As you can see, this, uh, this dispersion relation is not continuous and some gaps are open. These band gaps that we call is where um, the solutions from this dispersion relation where K is complex. So here K is complex. Furthermore, it's possible using the a causality principle and the source that turn at a given time and a given space that only exponential uh, ex, uh, the cane modes are allowed from uh, starting from the uh, sources. Now we have the time modulation. What we mean here is that we have um, a slab that is changing all the properties simultaneously and periodically in time is equivalent to say now that our velocity of modulation is infinity. As you can see here, the dispersion relationship is very similar to the space only case, but it's turned 90 degrees. Now we have omega periodicity, but in the frequency axis. Again, we have allowing uh, uh, modes in black and open new kinds of gaps uh, are open. These gaps now are in, in the k-axis. This is meaning that instead of having complex values of k, now we have complex values of omega. The big difference with this is that now growing uh, modes are allowed in these gaps. So there is an interchange of energy from the modulation of your media to the wave that you can amplify. The, the best example of these cases is of this case is a parametric amplifier. Now let's put the two together, and we have the space-time modulation. In this case, and we immediately have two cases. The first case is a sublimin the subluminal case. That is when the the velocity of modulation is sm smaller than the velocity in the, uh, of the wave in the media. This, uh, and this is what we have 
as a dispersion relationship. We retain a lot of properties from the space only case. For example, the gaps that are open, we have, uh, when, we have when we are in it, we have complex values in K only. In the other case, when you have superluminal modulation, what we said is that the modulation speed is bigger than the wave in the media. Then we have a lot of the properties from the time only modulation. K gaps, for example, and in these gaps, complex values in omega. But, but the, what we can say the most important property of these two guys are that the symmetry of, uh, of the band diagram is broken. And this is uh, give us a non-reciprocal metamaterial. What we mean is that the <laughs> is that the response when you inject a wave from the left to the right is not the same as when you inject a wave from the right to the left. This is true for both cases. Now, what happens when we go from one to another? When we pass from the subluminal case to the superluminal case, we make a transition from a very interesting uh, point that is called the luminal transition. In this point, when we are equal or very close to the, uh, the modul our modulation CP is very close to our um, speed of, of the wave in the media, we have a degeneracy of all forward waves in a single line. You can observe here. We have exactly when we have all the modes in a single line. At this point is where our luminal metamaterials are defined. And we gain very interesting phenomena. Here I show the figure two of the paper that inspired this presentation. What we can see is the output, uh, the norm square of the output field of a slab this one of a distance d that is given by periods of our modulation. When we have zero periods is the case when we have no slab. So we have a constant output. When we increase the distance from here, we can observe exactly two phenomena. So first let's, uh, let us focus on here on uh, the second graph where is the modulation, we show the modulation of the permittivity with respect with time. At two points, where is exactly at the, uh, when the, uh, the modulation speed is equal to the speed in the media. Let's remember that since we are modulating the dielectric uh, properties, we are also modulating the speed of light. So when these one is are equal to, uh, main phenomena happen when the change of this uh, uh, material property is a maximum, we fact gain. And when we have a minimum, we have a loss. This, as you can see here also from this uh, image, I, I will ask you to focus on the gain and loss that this right now is going to move, produce pulses. This type of, this is not unique to the luminal regime. You actually can go uh, to have the same uh, type of pulses with the subluminal or superluminal, but you have to be really close to the, uh, uh, to the luminal case. The, but one really important difference from when you are in the subluminal or superluminal case, is that when you are in the luminal regime, the amplification is unlimited. In, other, in the, a difference in the subluminal or superluminal, we have amplification, yes, but we have a, a, a limitation. We cannot increase uh, the amplitude more than a certain point. So here I'm showing a tandem simulation made in console, where we have a plane wave from the left and the aluminum metamaterial in the middle in this lab, we can observe when we have the gain point, how it's increasing exactly at this point, and how 
is decreasing another point. This uh, mechanism, as we can see, is also called uh, phase compression. And is that uh, this is because the line forms from here compress to the where is the amplification, trapping in certain manner the photon in this position of the grating. At this type of, uh, of localization have been called photon localization, but in the moving frame in 2021, but the same outer. Here, I would like to underline some conclusions that even though to the topic is very rich, we have barely scratched the surface. And each of them is just is a wall. For the space modulation, remember that you have band gaps in omega and only the K modes are allowed. When you pass to the time mod, uh, duration only, you have band gaps in K and amplification is allowed. In the subluminal and superluminal, in the superluminal as well as the subluminal, it is possible an, a type of amplification, especially in the superluminal phase. But the most important property is the no reciprocity. And thanks to this, devices not, recipro not reciprocal, such as isolator or circulator, have been banned using exploiting this concept. And from this point, uh, this publication, the luminal material, we have photon local localization, and this type of phase compression is a new form of amplification. Since we are compressing our band, uh, our wave, we are generating new waves. If we introduce, for example, in the last days, some dispersion from the slab, then instead of having one pulse, we'll have a train of pulses with different uh, frequencies because the point of amplification will change. If this, uh, just in the case of the nonlinear optics with the frequency come, and if these frequencies, uh, if these pulses are in phase, we have short pulses. So thank you very much. That, that will be my presentation. And if you have any questions, please let me know.